So, I'm now the PC technician at a local media shop and I decided that I'm going to be doing a regular series of videos about the repairs and builds that I do. There are a lot of client computers coming in with all kinds of crazy problems and uh, it can be fun to show that and some of the computers that I'm building including gaming computers, so you can see how I build those. Maybe it'll help you improve your own building skills. I've been doing this personally since 1997 Ironically, it's only just now that I've actually started getting paid for doing it. As you can see, there's more than just computer equipment here. We do a lot of video work and other things. Here's some old trashed client PCs. And, uh... Here's our outbox. Where we put all the completed computer fixes. This Toshiba laptop's kind of representative of some of the more exotic cases we've gotten. Uh, it's not quite as bad as another one I got that was missing a whole bunch of keys that had been mashed in. But still had quite a bit of wear on it. You can tell that they didn't have much respect for the computer. It was a younger kid that used it, as you can probably tell. I noticed a trend with laptops that have been given as gifts by parents. They all pretty much contain the same kind of damage. They could be into anything from MMOs to Facebook games. Either of which can be played, how shall we say, obsessively. And you know, I played first-person shooters competitively for a while. I know it can be quite easy to get very into the game, but uh, when I see this kind of damage on computers that are in some cases not even two years old, I wonder if maybe they're getting just a little too into it. So anyway, a tour of some of the things that I use around the shop. Starting with perhaps the somewhat more mundane power connectors. And moving on. Dum -de dum Over here we have an older computer that I took a motherboard from and I'm transplanting that motherboard into a newer computer. In some upcoming videos I'll be showing you the process of doing that. Because you know, sometimes old hardware is actually worth saving, especially if you're on a budget. Uh, maybe you want to use a computer as a web server, or just a simple surfing computer. And it might be a piece of crap, but it can often be improved with just a matter of a couple of simple parts, some extra RAM, a faster hard drive, and it'll feel like brand new. So in this job, I have the luxury of working with all kinds of different hardware that I wouldn't normally have access to. Many different memory stick configurations, um, DVD burners, Blu-rays, hard drives. And over here is the electrician's work corner, where we can do things like soldering, cutting wires, testing voltages. And there's that motherboard I was talking about that I'll be transplanting into a new case. Various other tools and doodads. Fan to keep me cool while I work. And this bird's nest over here. This has all the cables and wires I could conceivably need, and even some I do not need at all. We have power cables, VGA, USB, IEEE. Uh, for some reason we have some phone adapters and uh, various things that don't actually get used too much. Um, over here, uh, yeah, there's a uh, air pump. And we use that to clean out PCs. Often uh, client computers can be very dusty and have all kinds of hair and things inside. So I just give it a little bit of this kind of treatment. Like so. And uh, it's actually got quite a bit of power. It would be the rare case that I can't completely clean out with that, but in those tougher cases I also have the vacuum cleaner. So let's see what else. Some old video cards here. Um, and a newer card. Not top of the line, but it's good enough for a budget gamer PC. Which is this one right here. Uh, the video card is a GT440. One gigabyte of memory. The processor on the computer is a Core i3 clocked at 3.2 gigahertz, I believe. And let's just flip this computer on its side and have a look-see inside. The video card's an Asus 
it doesn't require any external power connector. Uh, it's completely powered by the PCI bus. I opted to put just a stock cooler that came with the Intel chip, even though I bought an extra cooler. And uh, the reason for that is, while it is a great and inexpensive cooler, it's often cooler installation that can be the most risky part of doing a PC build because of extra exertion that's often required to get it into place. When you're doing PC builds on a regular basis, there are three different types of investment that you want to pay attention to. And that's investment of time, effort, and of course money. And you want to minimize all of these. So I carefully select components that help me to accomplish that. Uh, this particular model of case, which is the Ace Echo, in my personal opinion, it's got everything you need in a case. It's inexpensive, and it has a, a great easy snap-in system for hard drives. Structurally, you can kind of see where they cut corners a little bit. Um, it's a little on the flimsy side, but alternatively, it's quite light. And given that it has no extra dampening features built in, it's remarkably quiet. So a couple of other things before we end this tour. We have the fiber optic LAN at the shop. And I often need to connect many different client PCs at the same time to do things like download drivers. So I use this hub here to connect everything at the same time. One thing that seems to happen just about every day is that customers will come in with a hard drive from an old crashed computer. And they'll want to save the files that they have in the My Documents folder. Uh, photographs and personal emails and things like that. It used to be a pretty cumbersome process to take out the hard drive from their old computer. First of all, sometimes you have to deal with stripped screws. Or maybe the old hard drive is an IDE, and the new computer doesn't even have an IDE connector. And then there are times when the customer doesn't even know which files they need, and will transfer what they say to transfer, and find out later that, oh, we missed something. But we'd already taken the hard drive out, so then we have to do it all over again. This little handy device here helps to eliminate that. Another example of where this kind of device comes in handy is if you have a netbook that needs to be reformatted. The problem, of course, with netbooks is they don't typically have a DVD player built into them. Rather than putting an operating system on a USB stick, you just use your regular Windows CD. So on the front it has an IDE connector, and through the top you can slide in a SATA hard drive. And this specific model plugs in with USB. There is one unfortunate thing about this design. You may have noticed, and that is that although SATA is available in DVD players, only IDE would seem to be compatible because of the size of it. But anyway, with a the netbook, then you'd go into the BIOS, select USB device as the first in the boot order, and you'd be able to install Windows as normal. Um, that pretty much wraps it up for the tour, but stay tuned for some great build and troubleshooting videos.